if you don't have as much of an investment in the future of this country, maybe you shouldn't get nearly the same voice. When you go to the polls in this country as a parent, you should have more power. You should have more of an ability to speak your voice in our democratic republic than people who don't have kids. Let's face the consequences and the reality. Let's give votes to all children in this country, but let's give control over those votes to the parents of those children. They've given him, like Megyn Kelly on Fox News, everybody, they've given him, J.D. Vance, all oh, these yeah. opportunities to clean up his childless cat lady comment. And he hasn't been able to. Like, he ended up apologizing to the cats instead of to the ladies. That's not how it, that's it. Because he, he means it. Because that's his intention. He has said in more than, more than once mm -hmm. that he thinks people without children, that that's bad and must be punished. And people with children must be rewarded. He wants people with children to have more voting rights. He wants people with children to pay less taxes. But yeah. here's what I want to tell him. Yes. There are two types of women in this world. There are women who have no children because they are free to choose so. And there are women like me who have no children because we couldn't. Mm -hmm. And how dare you try to tell me that I am lesser than? How dare you tell me so, that I have less rights and less voting rights than others? So you are we? I Salute to Edward Anderson. He has a term he calls the lie to me economy. I was thinking that this might be the lie to me election, but all the elections are lie to me elections. But I think this election, more than any other that I've ever seen, is the make me feel good election. There's so precious little talk this close to the election about actual policy. People are drowning in inflation right now. People are having difficulties with issues from family court, people are having issues with the border, and everyone's talking about the feel good, tingly stuff, the stuff like no fault divorce and everyone is in on it. You know, some politicians, political pundits, even voters say she has to choose a man, not only that, a white man, um, if she wants to win this election. Do you agree with that? <laughs> I don't agree with that. I'll tell you this. In Michigan, myself, my secretary of state, my attorney general, all the chief executives in Michigan are women. And every one of us was told there may be too many women on the ticket. Mm. Baloney, we've proved that wrong in the swingiest of swing states. And I think when you show up and you listen to people, which is part of, I think, my philosophy, and I know that um, Vice President Harris shares that, every person matters. Every person's important. We got to show up. We got to build a future so that every person can see um, prosperity and, and a brighter future in this country. Right about when we have points of view, it's important for us to remember not only the points of view that we have, but where or what kind of environment in which we have them. It's very normal for people around the world. Maybe 98% of the people see this as probably the sweetest moment they've seen this year on television, if not for a very long time. Two people who worked very hard to get to the Olympics, shared a lot of moments in training. At the zenith of her career, he proposes to her and it's a beautiful moment. But where we come from, some people see this as oppression. She wins a medal and he takes the moment away from her by proposing. So now it's all about the proposal and not her medal and her accomplishments. That is a view that's held where we are. This is a normal way of looking at it for many people that are in the West, or should I say young ladies. And so for this young couple to have this beautiful a moment and it be tainted in some people's eyes by male oppression, is the environment this is the western environment now qualities do men like in women that's a very interesting question the man them hurt very silly question but fantastic answer which you're going to hear very soon she nailed it yes girl as women we have far better things to focus on period so pretty much the question was asked, which is the never asked question in today's society, at least in the West, what does a man want? Because you're gonna hear very soon that men have basically no right to want anything. I think as a progressive woman, it's very important to focus on who we are authentically and what we can offer to the world, the impact that we can make on the world, how we can empower and inspire others rather than what men like in us. Hey, friend. My whole phase started at age 52. Mm-hmm. 
I'm 54 years old. I started at 52. Now, when is it going to end? I can't tell you that. Only my knees can tell us that. Okay. Honey, I'm out here living my best life. No regrets. Okay. I love you. Bye. In 2024, I'd have to be a Neanderthal to make an argument that women should be at home just as child rearers. That is a insane argument, not just because uh, it's 2024, but because many of the great minds that have made many of the advances that we enjoy are women. But that said, this is a feel good answer that does not answer the question of family formation. What happens when you take your 20s and your 30s and you are not married and instead of working with one guy and trying to build a family while you're building your career, you just focus on your career and then you get to the end of it all and you're looking for love. Nobody's answering that question because there's no feel good answer. And that's why people were so angry at Kevin Samuels, because there is no feel good answer. So the person that tells you the true real answer is the person that you hate. One day my dad was just chilling in the house. His cousin busts in the room and she's just crying, bawling her eyes out. She's like, oh, my fiance, he ended things. He doesn't want to get married anymore. He called off the wedding. It's like a week before their wedding. No. Calls off the wedding. So my dad's like, don't worry, I'm going to go talk to him. Gets in the car, drives to her ex-fiance at this time's yeah. house. Bro, you know what happened? You know, my cousin's a good woman. She's really sad. What happened? Like, all this. Her ex-fiance is like, like, man, I was at my bachelor party yesterday. He's sitting around with all his boys. They're celebrating the fact he's about to get married. And he's like, man, I just love this woman. She's such a good woman. It's like, man, I got a woman nobody else can have. Like, let me tell you, I'm so excited. He's just going on and on about how much he raving about his woman. Yeah. Respectable. We love it. But then he finishes and everybody's silent. And then one dude just goes, <laughs> And oh no oh i be mean, i'm already crashing out <laughs> no. he's like uh bro man we wanted to tell you but you were so in love with her he was like what do you mean no stop he was like y'all know she been around the block and he there was like a name they gave her which i don't even remember a the name? name but that's so bad they used to call her because like no everybody been with her all of us been with her no <laughs> Nah, see, no. that, nah, as a homeboy, nah, nah, nah. Are you never telling me before? You never tell me? Nah. I guess, like, their thing was he's so in love, we're not gonna ruin it. Nah. I'm Bro needs to reset that game. New bros, new girls, new everyone. I mean, at that point, if it was all before them, her past is forgotten, and you should love her for who she is now, but I guess not. From that moment they saw him bring her around, they should have told him, terrible friends. That's not the easiest thing to do. But so what? That's her past. Y'all love each other. What's the issue? People are so judgmental, such double standards. The mature thing to do is not worry about her past and move on from your friends to be the future man you need to be. All of these are really good, feel good answers, but they don't address the problem. And the problem is simple. If you want to be a wife, if you want a man to want you, there's a certain woman that you need to be for him to want to marry you. And that truth is not talked about openly enough. And it is kind of the basis for where much of the discourse for where we are, not just politically, but how we do everything is shaped. And it is in this environment that many of us are just not willing to participate because if you want something, it's oppressive. If you are asking her to marry you at the wrong time, you're stealing her shine, her light. If you try and tell young ladies that guys want this and they don't want that, they say that you are basically telling me something that I don't want to hear. Then on the very end of it, on the other side, you hear these very extremely powerful women saying, don't worry about having kids or having a family. You have a right to do what you want to do with your reproduction, which is fine, but it comes with consequences, not just for you, but for the nation. And if many of the young ladies who have gotten these new freedoms basically say that in this extremely free, maybe even the freest society that women have ever experienced that I'm never going to have kids, then this society is going to run out of people. And that is the inconvenient truth that is being left out of much of the discourse that many people are fighting against. Why? Because it makes them feel bad. Feel good is all that matters. Apparently these days, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays itself out. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, comment below. I'll catch you next video. Take care.